The pro football team in Washington has long been accused of racism with regard to its now defunct team name. Tonight, the allegation is a long running pattern of sexism. The Washington Post published a story Thursday afternoon detailing the accusations of 15 former female employees and two female sports writers regarding a pattern of abusive behavior by team personnel. The Post reports that in the last week, as it brought the allegations to the team for comment, three employees who were accused of sexist behavior suddenly departed. That includes longtime radio voice Larry Michael, director of pro personnel Alex Santos, his assistant Richard Mann. The Post detailed case after case of staff members harassing female employees in the years between 2006 and 2015. Further, the women brought into question whether higher-ups, including the team owner Dan Snyder and former team president Bruce Allen, were aware of the abuse. As for the women who felt victimized, one put it this way, we all tolerated it because we knew if we complained, and they reminded us of this, there were a thousand people out there who would take our job in a heartbeat. So summarizing the key points from comprehensive story. 15 employees, two reporters covering the team, accused the organization of sexual harassment and verbal abuse from former scouts and members of Daniel Snyder's inner circle. Earlier in the day, it was announced that the team had hired a D.C. law firm to review the organization's protocols and culture. Will Hobson teamed up with Liz Clark at The Post to write this story, a comprehensive one at that, and Will joins us now. Uh, what was the inception? How did this whole thing start up? Uh, we reached out to a number of former Redskin employees about two years ago. We'd heard uh, allegations of mistreatment of women in the workplace. Uh, but we just couldn't get enough women to go on the record, and we couldn't really get anything in the way of documentation. And thankfully, in the last few weeks, that changed. Among many things, uh, something that stood out to me was the notion that these women had signed non-disclosure agreements. NFL teams are, are very guarded about their trade secrets, but that's the football stuff. This is about a workplace matter. How difficult was that to get them to speak, uh, knowing that they feared maybe some legal retribution? That was a major hurdle. And, you know, we did ask the Redskins to uh, release these women from the NBA so they could teach us, talk to us about these issues, but the team declined. What's the best answer the football team has given you for the allegations you presented them in the team's defense? that this was the culture that existed, past tense, but doesn't now and won't in the future. But the firings you described were just all within the last week. I mean, so the turnabout has happened just because of the reporting? That's a valid point. And, and women have noted who filed complaints against some of these guys in years past that they felt there was critical mass of evidence for these firings to have happened before. Uh, the new coach has spoken on this, and we're going to get to that right after you, but... Where's Daniel Snyder in all this? How, how many times did you try to get a comment from his office? We asked a few times over the last week, uh, and Dan was unavailable. And to that point, this team obviously under great scrutiny with the name change, the whole nation talking about that, and now this. Um, so the key question is, who else knew about it? Because in the story, uh, some of the women say, how could they not know? I mean, they saw me crying. They knew that there was a disruption in the office because of this. Right. I think you know, some of the women concede it's plausible that, that Dan Snyder may not have known about this conduct, but that they, they feel that the way he belittled his top executives created a culture that allowed this kind of stuff to go on. Several of them have said they, they're out of, out of the game. Like, this ruined it for them. Uh, how emotional were they when you went through it? it? It was almost, you know, like hearing personal stories about kind of the tragedy that they suffered because of what they went through. Uh, some of them got very deeply emotional. Uh, and, um, you know, this this was a lot of these women wanted to have long, successful careers in professional sports. And, you know, within a few weeks of showing up at Redskins Park, uh, they realized that the culture they had to deal with on a daily basis there is just something they couldn't they couldn't withstand for, for years, let alone, um, you know, a few months. Are there other things you wanted to report but just didn't have enough goods to go with it? And is there more coming? Uh, we don't have any stories planned at the moment, but uh, my inbox has been very active today, so uh, we'll certainly be following tips as they come in. Will Hobson from the Washington Post, thanks for joining us on SportsCenter. Thanks, Ken. Now, in a text to ESPN's John Kime, the new coach, Ron R Rivera, responded to the story saying this, quote, biggest thing is that we have to move forward from this and make sure everybody understands we have policies we will follow and we have an open door policy with no retribution. Plus, my daughter works for the team. 
And I sure as hell am not going to allow any of this. Ron Rivera.